Okay. So, again, Valus Marineris is, is what? What? It's a big valley, right? It's kind of like the Grand Canyon of Mars. Um, again, it would stretch, uh, would stretch from approximately the west coast of North America out to the east coast. So it's like an order of magnitude larger than the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And so the, clearly it's a very prominent feature. What would you want to know about Valles Marineris? This is a, clearly a big part of Mars. What are the questions? Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Is that what you're going to? Yeah. Okay. So how, how did this form? What are the possible ways that it could have formed? If there were plate tectonics. Kind of a diverging plate boundary kind of thing? Okay. Erosion. Erosion. Okay. Michael? Like maybe an earthquake. Earthquake. Okay, kind of related to the, the plate issue. Giant glacier, kind of scooped out a linear structure. Taylor, maybe it's the the result of some kind. One of these major, one of these mega impacts in the past. Maybe it kind of split the crust at some point. Aliens. Aliens. Possibly, not probably. Possibly. Uh, so uh, it's a huge engineering project. So that they've got all these cliff faces for putting their terraced apartments in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Valles Marineris, I, I, I won't pull out a lot from this slide, but I just want to make the point that it's a very complicated canyon structure. It's not only larger than the Grand Canyon, but it's probably more complex in terms of, it's got all these side canyons. Uh, I mean, some of these side canyons are themselves as large as the Grand Canyon complex in, in southern Arizona. Um, you know, again, I would... Google these specific data, but it is uh, miles across, um, and actually even miles or kilometers deep. So it is this huge gash in the side of Mars. Clearly, the most comparable thing we have on the Earth, in in visually, would be the Grand Canyon, um, and so. One question we would ask is, is the Grand Canyon a good analogy for Valles Marineris? How, again, how do we use analogy to understand what's going on in Mars? <coughs> what kind of reasoning or logic do we use when we use analogy? That's like, like a comparison. Okay. We know a hell of a lot more about the Grand Canyon than we do about Valles Marineris. Michael? Um, so it's, it's, it's like if, uh, if, the, if Mal Valles Marineris seems to have been formed in a similar way to Grand Canyon, um, like if, it, if they bear a lot of similarities, then it's not too much of a leap in logic to assume that they could possibly have been created by the same. Right. Phenomenon. So by making use of analogy, we can apply, we might be able to apply what we know about the Grand Canyon, which is much better studied, to our interpretation of what's going on um, with Valles Marineris. But that only works if it's a good analogy. Okay, so what we know about the Grand Canyon is uh, uh, basically in this, area of the Colorado Plateau, uh, a whole long series of sedimentary layers were laid down over the span of about a billion years. Um, there was a 
Proto-Colorado River that was flowing through this area. And what we know in particular about the formation of the Grand Canyon is the whole plateau that the Colorado River was, Proto-Colorado River was flowing through got lifted up by tectonic processes. As that plateau gets lifted up, what's the river going to do? What? No. Uh, the, lift, the lifting up is slow enough that the river doesn't really notice it too much. It's just going to kind of stay there and dig through? Yeah, it's just going to continue to cut down and down and down into the plateau as the plateau is being ri ri uh, risen up. And as a result, we get this huge, from our perspective on the Earth, a Grand Canyon in southern Arizona. Um, and there's been some recent debate about this, but probably the canyon itself formed over maybe a couple tens of millions of years as this uplift and erosion process took place. So the Grand Canyon is, somebody said erosion, is, is the result of erosion, fundamentally. Not so much with Valles Marineris. Valles Marineris is a, uh, a rifting process. It was produced by a rifting process. Uh, essentially, we've got um, we have the crust in the area where the where Valles Marineris developed being stretched apart being pulled and stretched. Uh, and under this you know, tensional force, what happens is you get um, fault lines developing where the sections of the crust will, will, um, will break. And then as, the outer, as these outer parts are pulled away, the inner part just kind of sinks in um, as as the uh, um, as the other as the shoulders are going to pull apart, leading to this formation of a rift valley. Now we actually do have a, a rift valleys on the Earth. The rift valley in East Africa is mu a much better analog for Valles Marineris than the Grand Canyon, um, and. Um, it's pretty impressive. I've been there once, and uh, you know Nairobi is on the east side of the Rift Valley, uh, very high elevation, and you drive up to the Rift Valley, and it just looks like this place where the land has just kind of fallen uh, into uh, into the earth. So, in terms of uh, What's going on with Valles Marineris? We have this rifting process. Um, I won't bother you with the terminology. Uh, that leads to the uh, central part of the canyon sinking down. Once that rift valley is produced, what impact will erosion have then? It'll continue to like, cause it to Right. So it'll continue to erode away at the sides, and it might cut some uh, some other smaller valleys back into the sides of the of the rift valley. Um, and over time, you know, both perhaps water erosion in the past, perhaps glacial uh, erosion in the past, but certainly wind erosion in the present is going to continue to scour out Valles Marineris. Um, opening up that, that valley more and more. Oh,